Hello everyone, this is MU Squid. Today we will be covering the techniques used to complete an Ape Escape Pumped and Primed speedrun. These techniques are predominantly aimed at the 100% category, but will cover strategies used in other categories, such as win the tournament and any percent. First, let's start off with character selection. For 100% category, Helga is used due to her ability to use homing arrow and has a strong slingshot. For the any percent and win the tournament categories, you're going to want to use Team M, since the light blue monkey allows you to get enough points to regress by winning the least amount of events. Now before we go further, I want to clarify something about Team M. The general assumptions that I see online is that the red monkey is best for stun clubs, while black monkey is better for slingshots only. Now, while it is true that Black is great for slingshots because of the 5 round burst he has, his stun club should not be overlooked. In this clip, you'll see that Red Monkey can extend his combos with an uppercut. This is only ability that Red Monkey has compared to the other monkeys. He can additionally extend further by slamming the ground when the opponent is falling after the uppercut, but this technique can be harder to land and can be rather inconsistent. So there you saw how long it took for me to KO a stationary opponent. Admittedly, it was significantly slower than it could have been due to me not optimizing every single hit and comboing with the floor punch. Now even when taking into consideration that with Red Monkey, my timing was slower. Black Monkey, you can see, is still significantly faster because he has an auto combo on his hit, as long as you stand close enough. As you saw there, the first punch I threw, only one or two hit because I wasn't standing close enough. This is much faster because the opponent will never get knocked over, so they are always vulnerable for the attack. For versus Jake 1, it is important to note that you want to line up the oil spills so that when he charges, it will ignite them. Getting him to ignite them all as quickly as possible is crucial, as upon the final explosion, a missile pack will appear in its place. This missile pack will allow you to pack a huge punch and destroy him quickly. An important thing to note that in this clip you see, if you get overzealous and jump for the missile pack immediately following the line of trail, you will get caught on fire and slow your time down. For Versus Spectre 1, the current any percent world record uses a technique where he uses the stun club. This is an exception as most other runners will choose to use Black Monkey with the slingshot. Now practicing boss fights in this game can be rather simple because they're all on a scripted set path. So you will be able to know what moves are coming before they actually send it out and get yourself in position to where you want to be.
Now my timing there was much slower than typical world record pace, especially for the any percent or win the tournament category. A thing that I should bring up now though is to show how Helga is really good for the 100% category though. Her slingshot does a lot of damage. A good time for this for Team M is getting it around 45 seconds. As you'll see in this next clip though, with Helga, I do a lot of damage in a very small time frame due to her slingshot. This will allow the boss to be completed before he starts his running phase, and thus you can get into sub 35 with little to no practice. Jake 2 is a really straightforward fight. The only thing that really is to note is in this first phase you want to dodge the bananas. And at the beginning of his next phase he'll take the center. He'll begin to spin around while the monkey shoots his gun. During this time you want to find a spot where you can stand and dodge a lot of the bullets. As you can see there at the beginning I took a couple hits but then I kind of dialed into a spot where I wasn't being hit every other time. If you play around with it, I'm sure you'll find a spot that works great for you where you can just stand and fire at him and not have to worry about trying to dodge any of the bullets. Now semi-final course B has two tricks that I'm going to cut to. The first trick was just performed. This is if you have the dash hoop, you can jump over the first gap without ever needing to use the dragonfly. You will need to use the dragonfly for the next two jumps though. And that will work with any character. You can just hoop and double jump and clear that first gap. For this next bit, it is a skip that is only available to Team M. Once the video resumes, what you're going to do is go down the right ramp and there'll be a blue skill board that you'll see. This will always spawn in at this location, so you don't have to worry about getting it earlier in the run. Then you're going to go to the base of this ramp and get as close as you can to the edge. Then summon monkey UFO and go directly to the goal. Take note of where the spinning platform is and that when your monkey UFO ends, you'll quickly switch to Dragonfly, land on the platform, and go to the goal. Versus Pipitron has a strategy unique to Helga. And this clip will also show why Homing Arrow is so strong for the rest of the game as well. Since once you start the animation for the attack, it cannot be cancelled by an enemy unless they were to jump above you and take the brunt of all the arrows in one hit. In this part particularly, when the Pipitron go in the air, every arrow is guaranteed to hit them because they are stationary. Take note that during this fight, when it's filling your skill bar, the yellow Pipitron will dodge all slingshot attacks, so focus on red and blue Pipitron. 
Versus Specter 3 has another one-shot trick unique to Team M. This makes the fight incredibly fast. All that is needed is to charge up Goliath Fist and send it and it'll hit all of his different hitboxes. Now, where you have to stand can be pretty precise, so practice it several times to make sure you know exactly where you need to stand, as this comes pretty late in the run. But when you get it right, you can easily get it done within 20 seconds. If you do miss that first cycle where his arms come back to his body, you can easily set up for the second time when he's about to tilt the ship to the right side, you can hit him again there, another opening is available although the timing for that is a lot harder to get. Now, as some of you notice, I said another trick that the team M has is a one-shot. Here is where originally his one-shot was found. With grid core, Goliath Fist will take out a whole health bar. Now when you want to farm your skills is up to you. In order to show that this trick how it works with each of the health bars, I farmed it for the first health bar. So that way with the subsequent three health bars you'll see that it is guaranteed to take him out on the first go. Now this fight does have some RNG in it, so be prepared, because you don't know what attack he'll send out at you compared to previous boss fights. So as you can see, I got all three of my skill charges. And that is one health bar gone. I like to throw out a couple punches just so I know when he is actually vulnerable to attacking. And there's the next one. Something to note is that when the fist comes down, it doesn't hit him enough to take out the full health bar. But when he comes up, it does the final hit that will. If that coming up does not hit, make sure to have your slingshot ready so that you can finish off the fight quickly. And that's all you need to know to go out and perform an ape escape any percent as well as an Ape Escape 100%. So thank you for watching and tuning in, and I hope that you will click on some of my other videos, and I hope to see you guys running this more.